Folks, welcome back. My name is Timmy, you're watching Ruby. Folks, my patron, Eric, actually purchased a box of Ixalan and Rivals of Ixalan from me. We were going to do a double box opening today, but I actually decided, you know what? There's a lot to talk about, so we're actually going to split this to two videos. We're going to do a box of Ixalan opening today, and then we're going to do another Rivals of Ixalan box opening tomorrow. My patron, Eric, here has been waiting a few weeks for the video, and... Uh, there are so many similarities, so many specifics I want to discuss with everybody today. And I really appreciate you, Eric, for being a very kind patron. Enjoy the video, my man, and good luck. Um, there's just so much data to go over. Because remember, this is... Exelon and Rivals of Exelon. I'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Like, these people are happy on the back. <laughs> oh, God. No, I'm, you know, they don't do the justice of how bad this product was. It was such a bad selling product. I, I don't even know how to tell you guys about it. River Rebook. Rebook. So, first thing, basic uh, financial information. These boxes were probably around 160, 170, plus maybe tax and shipping, maybe 180 out the door, maybe 190 out the door for most people, uh, bouncing around plus or minus. Uh, on top of that, expected value is actually holding it around $100 a box. Um, other important data everybody should know. Um, this era of boxes were known for very, very bad card quality. Extreme uh, faded on the ink, overly darkness, the contrast ratios, everything was just rough. Uh, looks like we're getting lucky, though, because we have a very good quality. Oh, Carnage Tyrant coming in. Woo, okay. Stupidly powerful 7-6 for 6 drop. You can't flip any counter, trample, just stupid. So, um, next thing everybody needs to be aware of. This is one of the products that you actually want to get all the rares, not the mythics. This is a product where most of the value is in the rare slots. And let me explain what that means, everybody. Beautiful alpha there. And what I'm saying is that the value of this product is distributed among like 20 to 30 cards of value. Where it's like one third of all the rares have good value there. Ooh, Sun's Avatar. And our first foil, Foil Hijack. So the mythics, uh, but Carnage Tyrant, and maybe only one or two other mythics have value. But man, you have so many rares, oop, so many rares of value that it, it's a box opening, mass box opening dream to have that kind of thing. And here we go. We got the old tracker. So like I said, that's why I'm not going to go over a lot of specific values of the rares in this set because so many of the rares are valued between like two, three dollars to ten dollars a card. A ton of them. And wow, we got really lucky. Great card quality, Sanctum Seeker. Very, wow, this is, we haven't had any card quality centering issues, uh, contrast, faded issues of ink or anything. We've, this is actually, this is, I guess I was a little concerned about that. I was getting nervous uh, doing a box opening. Oh, Vraska coming in with that fancy snaky hair. Mythic number two. Uh, Vraska, again, mythic, uh, Planeswalker, not really worth a lot, but again, very iconic for the era, the old pirate. I call it a... Uh, I remember calling her uh, pirate, the pirate chick, the pirate Vraska. So, anyways, coming through Rootbound Crag. Uh, again, items like this. Uh, the land cycles actually, it, it holds its own. I mean, honestly, uh, the land cycle on this is still like three to six dollars per land. It actually does pretty good considering it's not a shock land bag, fetch land type box. Without having shocks or fetches, <clears throat> or I guess now scry lands or something, or, or triomes or whatever. Um, to be able to hold around that $5 a pop is a very nice thing. That's, that's not easy to do. Oh, I love the compass. And by the way, everybody, just so everybody knows, the next thing to talk about here, these flip cards were supposed to be lottery cards. They scrapped them. Wizards, these were supposed to be lottery masterpiece cards. And they scrapped them. And I know, I know, people are going to laugh at me like, I, like Rudy actually matters in the world of wizards and everything, which I don't. I'm just a regular dude who doesn't get haircuts. I'll be honest with you, I bashed the lottery card thing, and I was so negative on it. I feel like I did not help the situation, and I regret that. That's one of my regrets on, on something that I called that I felt I was very wrong about. Um, I was so angry when Mark Rosewater said every set was going to wow, our third land. Every set was going to have lottery cards when he announced that at Kaladesh because of success after BFZ and Oath. I became super negative and angry about it, and I was so furious. I canceled my Kaladesh box opening. Or mass box opening and everything. Oh, blasting cannons, great card. And um, I, I just remember that, and I regret that. That was definitely a mistake on my end. And I look back at it, and I was like, oh my, could you? I, but again, you know, 
maybe it's tough to say that because if this product did have lottery cards, uh, wow, these cards are great today. Uh, if this, this product did have masterpieces, how much more would it have sold? How much more successful would have Ixalan been? And if Ixalan was that successful and they did multiple reprints and restocks, what would the financial value, oh, Waker of the Wild, what would the financial value be today? So, you know, there's a lot of moving parts because, again, if the product was a home run and it kept selling out and they had to print, reprint it two, three times, Ceratops, um, you know, the supply would have been double, triple what it is today. That's one of the reasons Ixalan and Rivals of Ixalan continues to grow in value is, yeah, it turns out they aged well, Raptor, and turns out a lot of people like dinosaurs, and turns out that, and here's the biggest one, well, if it doesn't sell that good, and Wizards cuts off the print run, they just don't really keep reprinting it because it keeps selling out, guess what? Long term, well, the product is going to appreciate in value at a higher rate of speed because there's no product in the system. And well, ladies and gentlemen, that's what happened. And oh, the heck, wait a minute. Did I missed the rare, uncommon, uncommon, uncommon. Is the rare a different order? I guess so. Okay, foil land. Ah, uh, yes, the conquered, the old vehicles. That's another thing we can talk about here. <clears throat> the um, I was never a fan of vehicles, even in Call of Aether. Well, you know, energy, energy mechanic and Call of Dash was so broken, according to everybody. You couldn't interact with it. It was a pain. Sell the wreckage. That was a very popular card. I remember that. Here's the thing. I was never a fan of vehicle cards. I didn't, I didn't like the flavor of it. But now that time has gone by, I've seen how it's aged and different things. I'm a little bit more open-minded. And again, I made a lot of mistakes bashing Wizards and some of these things in the past. And like I said, I... Yeah, I don't know. I, I hate it. It just is what it is, man. We all make mistakes. And, you know, I look at this thing, Priest. And look at the swamp. Look at that swamp, man. Holy smokes, that looks great. So, it's one of these things where, you know, I, I'd like to tell this. And that's one of the reasons I like to do a random box opening on products like this. Because, again, Dragon Skull Summit. My goodness, is that our, that's a, that's our fourth land? Are we going to go for the whole five land cycle on this product? That's crazy, man. Like, Eric, do you realize the probability of that? That's really, really unusual. Okay. Hey, Unclaimed Territory. I forgot about that card. This was like a $3 uncommon, man. Uh, I don't know if it still is, but, you know, you guys can bash me below. Fleet Captain. I remember the old Pirates. Oh, that artwork on that treasure token is stunning, man. Oh, with that dino little dinosaur bird on top. Anyways, you know, I just... I, I'm unkept. That's why I bring... For those of you who listen to my channel and follow me for many years... You'll notice that, oops, sword point. You'll notice I talk about the Amon Kitty Cat, Hour of Devastating Your Wallet, Ixalan and Rivals. I talk about this era a lot because it's one of my most learning curve, mistake, emotional, stupid. Oh, there we go. Warden away. It's a very nice card. Good old Merfolk. It's one of my eras where I realized I really made a lot of bad judgment calls. I was overly emotional and provocative and aggressive towards wizards. Blood fast turns into the nice flipping temples. Legendary temples, man. Look at that. And it doesn't come into play tapped. And look at that. He has the bonus ability. Tap, sack a creature, gain life equal to the toughness. Sound familiar, doesn't it, everybody? You know, so I look I look back at this stuff. And that's one of the reasons, you know, and I know you guys are going to laugh at me and make fun of me. Rudy's pumping Ixalan now. You know, but uh, th these boxes are going to be three, four. These are going to be $500 booster boxes one day. Because it's just, and I know that sounds completely stupid. And I don't be like, oh, here we go. Hey, Star of Extinction. I'm never a fan of this mythic. Flipping seven drop. Destroy a land. Deals 20 damage to each creature in Planeswalker. It's such a meme, man. Like, you know, it could just say destroy all creatures. But the whole 20 damage, I think, was a really, really a, kind of a funny thing, you know. But, you know, I just, everything I've learned about, oh, that is a, that's a pretty cool looking dinosaur. Cool coloring in that card. Everything I've learned is just one of these things. You have to be able to understand the ebbs and flows of markets, and when things are bad, and, and even and I and I, I learned a lot about myself even back then, just learning about how my attitude was towards these bad era of products. I mean, you know, for those of you who weren't around, I can't. I, there's nothing I can say in this video to get you all to understand how. Wow, did we get all the land cycle? I think we got all five lands. There's nothing I can say in this video to make you all understand how many LGSs were going out of business, how bad Magic product was. It wasn't selling. Legion's landing. Oh, man. There's a memory throwback. Legendary turn into the infamous fort, man. 
Ah, pumping out Vampire Lifelink. Oh my god, I remember that card. But I, I can't... That That's the biggest point of this video that I want you all just to understand and listen to me about is that, you know, this was an era where, you know, oh, hey, foil up! And, um, you know, it's just... LGSs were shutting down. Stores were dumping product at losses. Distributors were selling product at losses. Like, you know, Wizards, the print-to-demand... You know, that whole thing didn't matter because it barely sold. There really wasn't much of a printed demand because they could, the product just didn't sell. You know, oh, 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 look at this last pack of the box. Mythic number three. The, oh, I thought that was a flip, the flip one. Ravenger. And look at this, ladies and gentlemen, the dagger, the gorgeous dagger flip card, man. The Lost Veil, and it's a foil rare. Dude, stunning, man. Ah, uh, I wonder, I always wonder though, the last thing I always wonder, what would the framework have been if these were masterpiece cards? Would this art just been stretched to the edge with no black outline? Would there have been a different like framework like the expeditions and masterpieces and invocations? So anyways, to wrap this video up today, Eric, so you got a second video coming for Rivals of Ixalan probably in the next couple days here. Uh, but I want to split it apart. I really want to take the time and tell the story. I really appreciate you allowing me to open this. All these cards are heading your way, man. I uh, really appreciate it. I hope everyone enjoyed the video. And, you know, I, I firmly believe as time marches forward, a lot of this information is going to be lost. And I've already noticed a lot of that because I can tell today, even on my own just little messages, Patreon, my own little bubble that I live in, you know, I can tell a difference on everybody who's, I can tell the patrons and the people who haven't been around on the previous downturn. I can tell a difference on who's been in Magic you know, in 2018, 2015, 2011 with Dragon's Maze, RTR, Gatecraft. I can tell a difference. And the people who've been around, it's so funny. Like, prices can drop 10% or go up 10%. And they don't care because they, they're, they're, they're smarter. They're more life lesson. They're more understanding of the big picture. And they're, they're better at it. They tend to do better long term. And a lot of the shorter term Timmy mindsets, I mean, they could buy a box of cards for 100 and then, you know, it, it drops to 95, and they're freaking out. And it's fascinating because, you know, you know, if you've ever bought equities or anything on Wall Street or stocks or bonds, I mean, principal fluctuation is something that if, you, if you're not comfortable with, you, you have to stay out of the game, man. I deal with it every day. If you, oh, don't even get me started on crypto. My goodness, it's like flopping a taco in the wind, man. You don't know which way it's going to go in the next five minutes. But that's, that's my speech, and it's, it's just so important to me. That I remind everybody of where we've been. Because no one's really... Like, everybody knows the history of what Magic sets and what date they came out. You can Google when did Ixalan release. And you can see Wizards' official release and excitement. But nobody is, like, making a diary or a documentary or a historical record of what happened as the product in this market changed. Like, you all don't understand. I hate saying you all. It's such a nasty... I, it feels derogatory. You know, but... I feel like the public doesn't understand that, like, like 10 to 20% of all LGSs were, like, collapsing and going out of business during the Amon Ket Hour, Ixalan, Rivals, Iconic, M25 era. Like, LGSs were dropping magic and shutting down like crazy. Like, I can't emphasize that enough. Like, you know, I remember the last batch of Rivals of Ixalan I ever bought from one of my distributors was on clearance instead of me paying, like, 76 a box. And at the time, I was selling for $79.99 to patrons. And now, you know, it's a couple dollars higher because inflation and shipping costs. But back then, I remember them, like, dumping the last pallet and offering it to me for, like, $66 a box if I would just take the whole thing. And at the time, I was, I, I literally said no. And then after a few days, I thought about it and thought about it. And I went back and I actually ended up getting it. And that's today where, like, this box I opened of Ixalan and the box you're going to see soon of Rivals, that's where this product came from. It was a, it was a it was an instant call and I risked it and I remember telling friends and family and they thought it was stupid because magic was just falling apart it was doing terrible and magic was dying right and I just want people to know that these swings and emotions and attitude we have towards now crimson Val, midnight hunt collector boxes the more things change the more they stay the same and I'm telling you all I'm not the only one out there who's still building positions, even in the new stuff that everyone hates and says is worthless. I'm staying the course. I still believe in it. And no matter how much attitude and anger you all have, I have, we have towards Wizards, 
Magic is still a legend. And it's not going anywhere. It's going to evolve. But I believe in it. Just the same way I believe Magic's going to stand the test of time. Pokemon's going to stand the test of time. You know, I believe Flesh and Blood's going to stand the test of time. And a lot of these other card games. I think I know it's stupid. I think Weiss is going to. And I know you can laugh at me. But I think MetaZoo and Force of Will are going to keep making sets in 5, 10, 15 years from now when I'm long gone. On you, Not long gone, but long gone off YouTube. But, you know, knock on wood, right? You know, but it's, it's you know, that's just how I believe. I believe there's a lot of positivity. Everyone's negative. The media wants everyone to pick its side and hate everybody else on the other side. You know, we live in this divisive, everybody choose your battle. But I'm, I'm positive. I'm an optimist. I've been negative. I did it during this year with these, these old years with Ixalons and other sets. I've been down the negative path. I've acted that way. I've made decisions based on that. And guess what? Every single damn time, I've regretted it. Every single time I was negative, didn't buy, skipped the product, bashed something. Every time, I regret it. Because time marched forward and made me look like a joke. And I've learned from all those mistakes. And that's important. And you all listening, just like me, you're going to make mistakes in life. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with making mistakes. Nothing wrong with getting things wrong. you got to move forward. Learn from it. And that's okay. If people want to bash a store, a distributor, or a product, or me, or one of your friends, that's okay. Because that just shows they're very, they're just shallow and short-minded. And they got the Timmy mindset. you got to be positive, And you have to learn from mistakes because you're going to make them. And again... It is okay to be wrong and make mistakes. I don't know why the internet thinks that if somebody says something wrong or a store does something wrong, you should like burn it to the ground. I don't know where all that came from, but we're all human and we're all trying the best we can. So I hope that that's, this is, this is how I feel when I open Ixalan because it's so much historical, important information that's lost. Thank you, everybody.